All right, so praise God. Good to have you with us. And um, things are going really good. I'm excited. I don't know if you like football, but tonight is our first preseason game. I'm looking forward to it. And if you're a football fan, I hope you're looking forward to it. And if not, go watch soccer or, or something, you know, reruns of the Olympics. <laughs> praise God. All right. Um, this is our Thursday's Word, and I'm going to give you a word. And actually, it's coming out of something that I prepared yesterday. Uh, and Well, actually, I prepared this on the 5th. So that um, this is the 8th. Oh, you, you may be interested in knowing this is my third birthday. Now, I have a birthday when I was born. Mm -hmm. I have a birthday when I got born again. And I have a birthday when God raised me from the dead back in 2001, August 8th, 2001, or 21, I'm sorry, 2021 was the day that I died and God raised me back up. And, uh, and I praise God for that. So I'm in celebration mode. And I've got three birthdays to celebrate in one day. <laughs> praise God. So happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. All right, enough of that. Um, Proverbs chapter four says the beginning of wisdom is, and here's what it is, it's get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. So it's not enough just to get wisdom. You have to know how to use it. You have to understand when, when God gives you wisdom, uh, you have to understand how to apply it. And so it, it's a bit more complicated than what we may think it is, but it is the principal thing. I remember when I was a teenager and I read that, I prayed about that and I said, Holy Spirit, I, I'm asking uh, you to give me the wisdom of God. And uh, you know, above all else, I want to be a person of wisdom. Now. I believe he's given that to me through the anointing that he's put on my life. Now, I have not always operated in wisdom because I'm human and we all, you know, have challenges that we have to deal with. And uh, so there are times that I have done what you would call foolish things. And there's times I've done things that I thought were foolish that other people didn't think they were. Uh, but my ultimate goal has always been to get and understand the wisdom of God and how to apply it. And, and he's saying, get it. So, and here's the, the, the booster shot for you today. If God is saying, get it, it must be available. Now we take it to the New Testament and it says, if any of you lack wisdom, you can ask of me, God speaking, he's ask of me, and I will give you that wisdom without finding fault. He's not gonna pick on your little uh, you know, the, the way you do things, the things, uh, you know, the mistakes you've made, uh, the foolish little things that you do sometimes. God's not going to pick on you and just before he does, before he gives you wisdom, say, no, nah, no, nah, wait a minute. You don't deserve my wisdom because remember when you said this and remember when you did that? No, God's not going to do that. So praise God. We can come before God if we lack wisdom in anything and we can ask for that wisdom knowing that God said he would give us his wisdom. And that's pretty exciting to know we can operate in God's wisdom. Amen. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. And I don't have a timer on this app here, so I'm kind of in the dark. Let me see. We're going about, what, five minutes? Mm -hmm. I think I tried to start at a quarter after, okay. but um, that's not when we started because I had to fill in information before I could even get started. So I think we've been going about five minutes. So um, Mary kind of take me from five minutes okay. to, to 20. Okay. All right, Proverbs chapter four, verse 10. And this is from the Amplified Translation. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. I have taught you in my way of skillful and godly wisdom, which is comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. A little more insight there, a little more uh, revelation. I have led you in paths of righteousness, paths of right standing with God. You can get out of standing with God uh, by things you do, things you say. Now, I just saw my other, my monitor here. I never, I never um, 
I never put it over on the church page. Well, I apologize. Anyway, I'm not going to do it now. Um, you can get off the path. God will guide us in the path of his wisdom. That's the best path. That's where all the blessings are. That's where uh, everything you desire, everything you need, God has those things on that path. But when you get off the path, you all that stuff that God had for you was on the other path. Mm -hmm. But then you go to God and say, God, I, I, I messed up. I got off the path. Lead me back onto the path. And he'll do that. Mm -hmm. He'll move you back over there. You can Now you may have to go across country, climb some hills, walk through some valleys to get there, but you can get back on the path. And so once you make a commitment to do that, God will move you over onto that path and you can get back in the blessing. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, if you go ahead and, and if you're reading this with me, uh, verse 12 says, uh, when you walk, your steps shall not be hampered. Your path will be clear and open. And when you run, you shall not stumble. Oh, I like that because when you're, when you're in the will of God, walking that path, because the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are order the Lord. So if you're going to walk in the path of God, you're seeking his wisdom to know what the path is, where the path is, what to do once you get on the path. You know, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. You find the path and you don't know which way to go and what to do. Mm -hmm. That's why you still need the wisdom. But you ask God for it. And then he, he uses the Holy Spirit to reveal his wisdom, his insight, his understanding. In other words, you get, the Holy Spirit is going to give us revelation. All right. So he says, when you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you get off the path, your steps are, are going to be hampered because you're over in, well, you're out of the will of God and you're over in the devil's territory. And he's going to do everything he can to put a stop on you. So once you get back on the path, you have a promise that your path, he says, your steps are not going to be hampered. Your path will be clear and open. When you run, in other words, you take off for what God's called you to do, uh, you'll, you will not stumble. But you got to stay on that path. Mm -hmm. All right, so just, you know, a little word of encouragement there. Uh, make up your mind that not only are you going to seek wisdom, but you're going to stay on the path of wisdom. You're going to stay in the place where God can reveal by the Holy Spirit his wisdom to you mm -hmm. and give you insight, give you understanding, give you revelation on, the, on what he has in store and what his plan may be for you. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 4, uh, this is verse 20, Amplified Translation, going to verse 27. My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. That's the word of God. Don't, don't get caught up in, in the Ten Commandments or the law. He's talking about his word. Amen. When God gives us a promise, we consent and we submit to that promise. If he gives us instructions, we consent and submit to those instructions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the promise may not be in alignment with where we think we're headed. And, and so that promise is going to have a challenge manifesting because you're out of the will of God. But when God gives you a promise of something, it's on the path that he's ordained for you. Now the Bible says that the, uh, the, the, the days of our lives are written in a book from the foundation of the world. Before the world was actually created, when God set the foundations of the world, we don't know how long ago that was. We don't know if that was just 6,000 years ago or 60,000 or 6 million. And it really doesn't matter. What matters is God is saying that there's a book with a daily, uh, our daily lives already written in the book, but they're written from God's perspective as his perfect will for your life. Now that's not God controlling us. That's God saying, I've set out a plan for you that's perfect. And, and along that path, there's blessings all along the way. But when you get off that path, you've strayed from the plan God had for you. And again, don't, don't ever think God's trying to be a dictator. He's not. What he's done is designed based on you, your personality and, and your giftings and, and anointings and so forth. God has created a path. It's a path of blessing. And, you know, if you're spending all your time uh, in areas where you're not getting blessed or blessings aren't working, you need to, first of all, find out, am I seeking God's wisdom as my principal thing? Secondly, am I in the path that I'm supposed to go? Am I going where I'm supposed to be going? Do I even know where I'm going? Do I have a vision for my future? Do I have a vision for moving forward? 
And so these are things you have to question in your life. And, and when you do that and you ask the Holy Spirit to show you, that's where he begins to reveal the path God has planned for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he said, let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, the spirit, your spirit man. How do you do that? Well, the Jesus said the word is spirit and life. So keep the word as you meditate the word. It gets down into your spirit. It's spiritual food for your spirit man. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's life. And, and you want that. <laughs> Verse 22. For they, the sayings of the words of God, are life to those that find them, healing and health to all their flesh. All of a sudden, you've got a new aspect when you begin to do what is required to make sure you stay on God's path for your life. There is also healing and health for your flesh. He, he comes right down to point blank telling you he wants you healthy. He doesn't want you sick. God is not the author of your problems. He's the solution to your problems. Yeah. Amen. All right. Verse uh, 24 or 23. Keep and guard your heart or spirit, man, with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it, out of your spirit, flow the springs or the issues or the forces. Those are all correct translations of life. Life, the life of God flows out of your spirit. Okay, yeah. so you, you need to understand that. Um, if, if you're not in God's perfect will and you're not meditating and, and doing what the Word says, you're shutting down the ability of your spirit to flow the force of God into and through you. So you want to be on that path that God has planned for you. You want to be in that perfect will that God has ordained. You want to be in the Word. You want to be meditating that Word. You want to be applying that Word being a doer of it. Why? Because all that is feeding the spirit man, making the spirit man strong and producing greater flow of life into your body, into your mind, in, into your senses. That, that's good stuff. <laughs> all right. Put away from you false and dishonest speech. Any speech that's contradictory to the written word is dishonest. It's the lie of the devil. Mm -hmm. All right. And willful and contrary talk put far from you. So he wants you not only to stop listening to the stuff that's opposed to the Word of God, he wants your words to stop being opposed to God's promises. And in other words, we're going to have to begin to speak what God has promised us, declare over our lives what God has said. So we're not speaking contrary words. We're speaking words of agreement with God. Hallelujah. Verse 25, let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. Let your gaze be straight before you. In other words, be focused. Be focused on the vision God given you. Be focused on the word which creates vision. Verse 26, consider well the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established and ordered or right based upon God's plan and God's promises for your life. Turn not to the right hand or to the left and remove your foot from evil. So there's two things there. Don't turn and go a different direction. If God has ordained something for you, if you're on the path, he's saying, don't stray from the path. Once you get on that path, stick to it. If you're not quite sure if you're on the path, ask God. Ask for the wisdom. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you, and he will. But going back to the first thing, the beginning of wisdom is to get it, is to seek God for it. Amen. Well, part of that wisdom is staying on God's plan staying are, are keeping our vision bright on the things he's given us to do the bible says he that began a good work in you shall continue that work until the very day that jesus christ returns well he hasn't come back yet mm -hmm. so god still has promised to to continue working in you what he's planned for you the only thing that can stop it is you hallelujah so i know if you're listening to this uh, you've got a heart for the things of god you've got a heart you may have already vision that God's given you for your life and the direction you're supposed to go. Stick with it. There'll be times when it won't feel like it's working and you'll begin to question, wonder if it's, you know, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I going the direction I'm supposed to be going? And, and, but if you know what God has declared over you, then stick with that. If you know what the word has declared, stick with the word. Uh, I, you know me, if you've been around me very much, you know one of my co uh, most common responses to your questions is, well, what does the Word say? 
Well, the reason I say that is because you need to know what the Word says. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, I'll tell you. But I'm going to find out whether or not you know. Because I can't uh, get in agreement with you in prayer if we're going two different directions. I want to go with what the Word says. So, bottom line, what does the Word say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've just given you some key scriptures here. Proverbs 4, 7, Proverbs 4, 10 through 12, Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. I'll just say the whole book, the whole chapter, chapter 4 of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Just go through and meditate that, meditate that, meditate that. Get it in you and, and begin to let wisdom be the principal thing so that the vision and the plans that God has for you are fulfilled in your life. If you get off track, don't get all beat down. Just mm -hmm. repent, get back on track, That's and keep right. moving forward. Amen? Amen. Well, with that, praise God. Have a blessed day. And I think I, I don't have a timer, but I'm about out of time. Okay, so be blessed, and we will see you back here Sunday morning in the name of Jesus. Amen.